Recording in progress. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, an introduction to designing web graphics for the spring semester 2022. Um, today, two kind of um, added topics um, as we f um, finish the semester. Um, one is that, um, as you see here on on the screen, I have a contact page where the end user can um, supply their name, email, and comments. And when they click the submit button, it will send it to my email. So if that's something that you would like to add to your website, it's really quite easy, excuse me, easy to do. And I'll show you how to do that. The second thing is, is that you'll notice at the top of the, um, the browser, these little icons, and I have one for myself, and you'll notice that Cerritos has one, and um, uh, Gmail has one. They, you know, they all have their own little icons. Well, I'll, I'll show you how to, to generate those. They're very simple. It's actually done online. You download the images, you put them in your root folder, and you're done. Sometimes it takes a little while to, um, for them to take hold and for them to be visible, but for the most part, um, they work pretty well. So let's start with um, adding uh, contact information to your page. And these are called forms, okay? We've worked with um, tables, for example, um, is a separate kind of element. And in this particular case, this is a, what is called a form. Forms allow the end user to supply content to your web page. So, where are we going to go, to go with that? Um, very simply, um, this will take just a minute or two. But what I want to do is, um, it doesn't matter which browser you're in, but you want to go to Tools. And then I want to look at Browser Tools. And then I'm going to look at Page Source. OK. So what I want to do is I want to scroll down. And where it says, you're going to see right here, under the my main division here, it's going to say class wrapper, class container, class special, header, da 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 da. I want to go all the way down where it says form. It's line 90, 90. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and I'm going to copy all of that until line 108, where we have the closing tag for the form. Okay, and I'm just going to copy it, Command C. Now I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver. And because this will probably go in your main content, um, it doesn't, it can be in a child page. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and highlight some text. I'm going to make sure that I see down here, okay, there it says add content here, there's the paragraph tag, and I want to put it before the closing tag of the article. If you want to put this inside a section tag, that wouldn't be a bad idea. But then all I have to do now is paste. Okay, now let's go back up, let's um, view this. And you can see there it is. It's not styled the same as the one that I had. But again, you have name, email, comment, and the send button. It all works. The only thing, the code that you have to change though, is where it says mail to, instead of kirkbmiller at gmail.com, in quotes, you need to put your own email address. And that's it. That's all you need to do. If you want to change the input parameters, um, such as name um, and where the text is and mail and that sort of thing, you can also add phone numbers. I can also come down here and inside, let's go ahead and select inside here somewhere. I want to select the, um, the form itself. So let's go ahead and select the whole thing. And with it selected, okay, 
you can come down here in where it says in the properties panel if you want we don't need to you can assign an id to it um here it says action mail to that's what needs to be changed and then the method is to post it okay i would not change that at all if you want to title it you can um if you want to target it um to uh you can um let's see um just plain text is fine so that's pretty much it if you want to add other elements you can always copy them and for example let's go ahead and do that um let's say in 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 addition to the email let's go ahead and select that let's highlight that area here uh, maybe I want to add make sure that they can add a phone number okay so let's come back up here well here's our input with a break so here is the one where it says name after that is the that's the text area there's the submit button hold on here yeah mail that's the one that i wanted to add so i have an input you know that there's a couple of line breaks in between these so I could do the same thing um, if I wanted to copy some line breaks so that I have additional ones. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this, this whole line. And you can see the size is um, 25 pixels. And I'm going to go ahead and hit a couple of return keys. And I'm going to paste. And I'm going to come back up here. And you can see that there's another one here right next to it. So what do I need to do? so that it's on a separate line. I don't need a paragraph. All I need is a, um, a break, okay, a line break. So I'm going to go ahead and in between here, I'm going to put in um, the left bracket and closing tag, or actually, sorry, I don't need to do that, BR, and then closing tag, and then bracket. Let's put another one, okay? I'm going to put in here, here, the R. Okay, let's go back. And there you go. They're on separate lines now. And if you want them spaced wider, I need to put another break. So let me go ahead and copy that. Just to make it all nice and even. And I'll go ahead and I'll hit the return key and put another one and we come back in here you can see that they're all evenly spaced now now the only thing that i need to do instead of email is i need to highlight that let's come down here and where it says mail in here for that says type text i'm going to put phone okay p-h-o-n-e Let's make sure that I put it in the right location. And where it says value email, I'm going to again say phone. Come back up. And let's see. Let's try to refresh and make sure that it's updated. not working okay next what i said um let's go ahead and close that up let's go ahead and add that we want the name phone we want the type text phone let me make sure that it changes it's supposed to change why aren't you doing that okay let me switch let's go from design view Let's come back to live view. Let's scroll down. There you go. Now it's changed. I just had to um, uh, refresh. And I'm going to go ahead and here, and I'm just going to add another space in there. 
And so when, you know, they can put their phone number in there, you can add other elements if you want. So it goes with the name, email, phone, and a comment. Make sure that it's all saved and you are good to go. Again, if you want to wrap it in a um, section tag and then to that section, if you want to add a little bit of space around it, but right now it's flush left um, and you're pretty much good to go. That would be the last thing that you have that you have on your page. OK, so that's um, adding. Um, um, that, that's adding for your, con, you know, contact page. Um, you're adding um, a form and um, that's it. OK, any questions about that so far? So it did do it right. I just need to make sure that um, you refresh the page so you can see what you have there. OK, so the next thing that we want to do is I'm going to go up to go back to let's go back to. There we go. Uh, I don't want to see the code right here, but what I do want to do is show you how to get to um, design your own um, um, widget here for your favicon. OK. So you probably have to design it in Illustrator or Photoshop, and they will give you the specifications in a minute. So let me go to um, Kirk's classes, and I'm going to go to either to handouts or weekly syllabi. It doesn't make any difference. And then when you scroll down to web tools, um, this is the Favicon generator that I, I went to. So if we click there, it opens up in a new um, window. And so says what you want to do if you want to select one of these you can um, so you can demonstrate with a random image you can create a an svg which stands for scalable vector graphics favicon and then you can go ahead and then once you're done you can check your favicon here okay um, it doesn't take long at all so what you need to first do is you need to create a ping jpeg or scalable vector graphic and it needs to be at least 70 by 70 pixels okay your image should be 260 by 200 pixels for pixels for the mo the optimum result so if i go ahead and i click in here to to select it i would have to you know go back into uh, let's go back into um Let's see if I have mine available. If I don't, then we'll just go through with a, which I don't probably. Um, let's go ahead with a demo with a random image. Okay. So let's go ahead here and we're going to just use, this is what it looks like once you um, have selected your image. And here are your options for each of these. So here is where it says lorem ipsum. And you can see here's this demonstration favicon here. Um, you know, what kind of background color do you want? Right now it is um, a gray. If you want it to be, um, let's go ahead and if you want to add margins, use the original image as is, that's what's set here. But if you want to change the background color, let's put in um, zero, zero, zero. So for black, okay, let's put in another one that we've used before, 090, okay, that green color. And you can see how the background of the favicon is changing. So let's go back to the image, use the image as it is, and it shows you a preview. So if you want, you know, in a dark theme, incognito, or if you want, if it's shown in a light theme, this is what it's going to look like. This is what it looked like on a desktop, and this is what it will look like on a mobile. Okay. So now for the next one, for Favicon iOS web clip, you need to work with the settings in here. So um right now this is the default one right here see with the background color it says use the um the original favicon as is that would be my best bet to go ahead and to design that 
um, in Photoshop. You know, you can make sure that it is that square format. Now, if you want it with a, a different colored background, if you want it with a white background, then that's what it would look like. But remember, on a white page, it wouldn't show up. So if we go back here, we have that. If we go back and we select another color from here, you can do that. Now, you can also specify the size of the margin you want for a 57 by 57 icon. Then, um, if you want down here, favicons for Android and Chrome, Android Chrome settings. So again, here in the center is the default look with um, no change. Um, just keep this as the, you know, the, the original, but it's showing you for each one of these in a window metro setting for Mac OS, what it's going to look like. Okay. And then once you have um, selected all of these options for and make sure that yours looks optimal. Um, like, for example, for this one here for Windows Metro, notice that the dark orange is selected. But if you want instead, if you want blue, that's what it looks like with blue. If you want teal, that's what it will look like with teal. And you can go ahead and you can um, and, and determine which, which of these look best for you. And then when you're all ready to go, just say generate your favicons in HTML. OK. And there you have. That's all you need to do. You need to then what you need to do is we need to um, come down here and we're going to it says insert the following code in the head section of your pages. So if you're developing your your website from a template, remember the head of the document is locked in all the child pages. So this is something that you would have to put inside the head of the document. Now, in addition to that, you will have to um, put this code um, inside your root folder as well, so that when you download the package, so this is what you put into the, the head of the document. But then what you would do is you would want to download the package of this. This is your favicon package. And this is what you would put inside um, your root folder. Okay, so extract the package in the root folder of your site. It gives you pretty direct instructions. And if your site is so-and-so, you know, HTTP colon uh, slash slash forward slash forward slash, um, da -da -da, you should be able to access a file name, you know, so, you know, the one that we have here, and you should see where it says favicon.ico. That is the, the favicon uh, file name. And then make sure that that's in your root folder and then you're set to go. OK. And that's it. A 20 minute demonstration. So um, let me see if I can show you in my root folder what I have here. OK, so let me go and I'm going to switch from um, Art196 and I'm going to go to my, there we go. So let's, um, it doesn't matter with me what page, because I'm not using, uh, but let's go ahead and just start with the about page. Okay, and then let's look in the head of the document. So I'm going to scroll up here. And I got to find it. There's a nav, there's a head. Um, there we go. Okay, that code that they gave us a moment ago for the favicon with all of these links, this is where I placed it just before the closing tag of the head of the document. So it's a copy and paste. And then what I need to put inside the root folder over here, as you'll see, here are all the images that they have provided for um, Android Chrome. Um, and there's a couple of different sizes. One is 192 by 192. 
Another one is 256 by 256. These are ping images for Apple Touch. We have another one. And then we should have one here somewhere with a um, IO. But if you just throw them in your root folder, everything should be fine. Yeah, here's the other one here. Favicon 16 by 16 pixel, Favicon 32 by 32 ping. And here is the favicon.ico. And that is comes in that package that you need to unpack. And here's the favicon package that I put in here as well. Just dump them all in your root folder. And it, as soon as you publish it, it should be set to go. It won't necessarily um, be visible in the, um, let's go ahead here. It won't necessarily be visible when, um, if you were to do a, a preview um, in a browser, but it, it probably will have to be published and give it a whirl. Okay. So those are the two things that I wanted to add today. I wanted to show you how to, um, uh, let's go back again here. I wanted to show you how to add a form so that you have your contact information if you wish. Um, I also wanted to, let's go ahead here. Can't remember which page I used. The about page? No. That's that. The green template? Oh, I put it in the green template. Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, if you put it in the green template, it will show up in the editable region, and you want to make sure that that's saved. Okay. So again, to, dis to find that, I'll repeat um, that code. The easiest thing to do is to go to my website. So let me go ahead and bring that back up. Uh, let's bring this down here. And let's go back to my website. And then what you want to do is you want to go to tools and you want to go to um, browser tools and you want to look at page source. Okay, so let's go back again. I got to make sure that I'm on. Let's go back again. I got to make sure that I'm on the contact page. Okay, so I can copy that code. And then what I need to do again is go to um, tools, browser tools, page source. And then I need to come down here to where it says form. So you just need to scroll through this. And it takes a bit of looking, you know, I can't sometimes find it myself here. Um, that's in the footer, so I don't want there. Um, here it is. There is a closing tag for the form. That's the only place. It's a closing tag. So I'll highlight that and I'll drag it up until I get to the opening tag of the form. Copy it and paste it um, in code view in your page and you're set to go. Okay, remember the only thing that you need to change is um, where it says in action, mail to, make sure that your email is, uh, is, is uh, replaced. Um, you replace mine with yours, and then it sh you should be set to go. Okie doke, that's it. Unless you guys have um, anything that you want to share or you want me to help you with anything, we're um, pretty much good for today. So adding forms and adding favicons. Anything? Anyone? What lesson you lesson 12? Um, you don't have to do lesson 12. If you if you want to, you can. Um, let me go ahead and show you what they look like. Um, let's go ahead here and let's switch 
root folders. Uh, there we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Now I need to um, make sure that I go to site, um, manage sites, and I need to change it for, um, let's go back here and change it for lesson 12. So that's a lesson 11. Let's go back to my Dreamweaver files. Here's lesson 12. That's going to be my root folder. Click choose. And then I need to go to advanced settings, go to local info, and I need to choose the folder inside lesson 12. Notice that it's going to lesson 11. I don't want that. I need to go inside the Dreamweaver files. I need to go back to lesson 12, open it up, and I need to select images. There we go. Okay. Hold on here. Let's cancel that. Um, oh, that's okay. Save. Um, you're not supposed to have, you know, for different sites, the same root folder. So that's why it's giving me an error message here. So let's go ahead and close this. And let's look at the finished files. And this is what they're supposed to look like. Here's green tips finished. Okay. So the only thing that they're adding here, and they're nice. This is a, a bootstrap. Um, if we go to bootstrap here, these are these um, accordion um, files. So if you click on the image, here, let me use preview here. Let's preview in browser. Actually, I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to click on here. No, it's not working. So how about if I go ahead here, let's say hide live view displays and I click. There you go. So that closes and you click here and that opens and you click again and that closes and you click here that opens. So that's what they've added here. I can go over this next week if you want, but it's not required. Um, what do you mean, does, it, does that bring in all of your previous files? Yeah, oh, you mean lesson 12? Yeah, it does. If they have all of them here, they are all, um, yeah. Because each lesson builds on the past, the, the last lesson. And then the other one, the travel finished. Um, this is an old style slideshow. So if you hover over these texts, let me go ahead and turn this off again. Let's hide live view displays so that we can see that. And when you hover over it, notice that it swaps out images the trick to doing this is to make sure that you have a um uh an image like this the one that is your your default image and then all of the images that get swapped have to be identical in size and all of this is put inside of a table so if we switch from live view to design view you'll see that it goes inside a table. It's really pretty clunky, but you can see here's the table that was created. And then so that we have, let's see, we have two columns and we have one, two, three, four, five rows. So it is really very crude. It's this was the first way that you were able to do some sort of slideshow. And that this dates all the way back to, um, uh, my gosh, 1996, 
Um, and it's nice, but it isn't, you know, if you were going to use a slideshow, I would use something like um, what I showed you with, um, uh, what is it, um, WOW slider. Okay, so those are the two things that this, that this particular website or this lesson covers. So doing kind of an old style slideshow with um, rollovers. And then the other one, the tips. Um, this is kind of nice, but notice that when you hover over the the bars, they it it changes that you get that hover state. But the only way you can open up the accordion is by clicking on the text, and I don't like that. Um, I used to use accordions on my website because I, I did like them, because what it does is it takes a lot of content and it. Um, and it, um, it condenses it so that, you know, the end user isn't scrolling a lot, but if you have done what we've done here in, in our, in our lessons, and you have fixed the, um, the, the nav bar to the top of the page, it really doesn't matter. You're not losing anything. So that's why I've kind of eliminated. I don't, as I said, I don't like having to click just on the text. I don't know that that would be intuitive for people, but it is kind of nice. And there is um, another one too that you can use if you go to um, insert and we switch to um, bootstrap components and we scroll down here. Well, you can bring in carousels. Those are kind of nice, but um, and that's equivalent to using a, a slideshow and they have different forms input groups stuff where is it here we go here's the accordion right here but you can also use one that's tabbed so it's just one big box and then it has a tab up here just the, the same way that you have tabs in your um uh, browser um uh, last question uh, so when we upload your site for the lessons um assignment what should it look like um well if you do lesson 12 it should look like that if you do if you just finish with lesson 11 it should look like that finished less that finished lesson okay i don't remember to be quite honest what i put in the spring 2021 they're usually the same, but maybe a little bit different. Okay. It, it's really not any different than um, what we did with lesson seven. It's sort of an accumulation. Lesson 11, in lesson 11, we focused on navigation. And so you should, all the pages that we have created up to that point, you should be able to navigate from one page to another. Okay, and notice that they added email links in there. So if you have those, if you have um, external links, absolute, there's also a link that we put to a Google map in one of the pages. So you would have that as well. Okie doke. So the, um, when you publish your website, test it and make sure that your wow slider works sometimes um, if the links or the paths are met, get messed up it won't work properly i don't want to alarm you but if you've done everything correctly it will work just fine okay okie doke okay julie um you got it um Paula, do you have any questions? Then we can call it a day. We're done for today. I don't know, you know, I don't have much to do next week. I mean, I guess I could demonstrate this, but I think everybody's going to be finishing up their website and making sure that lesson 11 is published properly. That's my goal to make sure that you do that. This is just lesson 12 is just sort of icing on the cake.
I mean, it's, it's additional stuff that's nice, but it's not essential. All the way up through a lesson 11 is essential. And that's why I included the wow slider instead of um, the other one that we do, the, the hover one in, in lesson um, 12, this one. I mean, this is kind of nice, but this is old school. And the reason that this was this one was sort of fell out of favor is that <clears throat> as soon as you roll off of it, it goes back to the its original state. So you have to make sure that your mouse stays there. And with a wow slider, you don't have to do that. You know, you can pause it. You can let it play. It, it's just kind of nice. Works well that way. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to pause the recording and uh, we're done for today. Unless you have any, um, Paula, do you, you don't have any questions? No. Okay. Okie doke. Yeah, if you do, be sure to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, as soon as possible. Okay. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.